Hello everyone, Ado here. And Ray here. And we're back to the world of Final Fantasy. So anyways, I believe that you were chatting up the citizens. What are you doing, Fishhead? If we cooperated with other powerful countries, those Federation goons probably wouldn't attack us anymore. Ah, uh, yes, those Come goons. to think oh. of it, our neighbors in Seronia also stand against the Federation. And again, if we joined forces with another country, we'd just become even more obvious targets. It makes it tough for the princess to reach out. I wonder if there aren't any powerful countries or organizations out there that we could ask for help. I don't know, but that's a mouthful. So the giants from the hills weren't just a legend after all! Wozers! That would mean, according to the prophecy... Eh, who cares about prophecies? The important thing is, Wozers! Yes. Wozers are indeed important, I guess. The important things in life. Hello, kitty head. <laughs> I knew it! So giants really can make themselves big or small whenever they want! If I became a giant, could I make myself big or small too? Well, I don't know. I mean, if you became a giant, you'd already be changing size. Also, I think you said in the previous episode that uh, you made an effort to catch those uh, two that are just uh, lollygagging up there. Yeah. Just the white mage and the black mage. I just assume they're the same one from the train. I mean, it's close enough out there, so... Yeah. What's this guy have to say? I don't know. It's over here. Nothing. Nothing? Just, just nothing. Nothing. Hey. Hey! Uh... What am I gonna do? Oh. Oh, say, you wouldn't happen to be the giants from the hills by any chance, would you? No, what makes you say you see, that? There's a situation I'm dealing with where I could really use your assistance, since you must know Mirage so well. Could I trouble you to please bring me an earth hammer? If you could, I would be forever in your debt. An earth hammer, huh? Except this quest. Oh, no. Deliver one Earth Hammer. Excuse me, I'm trying to get this stupid coat on, and it's proving more difficult than I thought. It's trying to strangle a monkey. I mean, it's like trying to strangle a monkey. <laughs> Not sure what that has to do with anything. I guess I'll accept it. Best... Mini Venture accepted. Best helm in the realm. Oh, so we're calling them Mini Ventures instead of quests now, huh? Side quests, yeah. Arr I have your Dr. Earth McGinn. Hammer. Do you? No. Talk to him again. Oh. Thank you again for doing this. Careful with that spear, you're almost gonna kill me with it. By me walking, hey wait. You have to marvel at the princess's stubbornness. After all, joining the Federation would guarantee her kingdom's safety and prosperity. Of course, you won't catch me going along with the Federation either. That's the whole reason I left my hometown to come here. So you're being a hypocrite? Wait, no, she's saying this princess is pretty good at being stubborn with not joining. Yeah, was that? Rukia or uh... oh, good catch. Yes, that is Michelle Ruff. Pretty sure it is. Okay, I was gonna. Many people who stand opposed to the Federation have abandoned their hometowns and fled here to Cornelia. Do you think that could be the reason that the Bahamutian army has become so much more aggressive lately? Maybe. Yeah, I was trying to remember Rukia or Yukari, uh, the female party member from Persona 3, that's the lovers. Was that her name, Yukari? Yes, but she is also voiced by Michelle Ruff. I oh. just mistook it for the first time I heard her because I was stupid. <laughs> oh. You know what I can't wrap my head around? There are actually people out there who've agreed to go along with those Federation tyrants. I don't know why anyone even trusts what they have to say. Well, who can trust what you have to say, Hubert, without your glasses? That was his name, right? Yeah, sure. What the hell? Huh? What's this thing? Oh! I was hoping the path might link the up here. Hey, Tama! Well, wait up! To Minnie get back home. What I question is, wasn't the princess gonna tell us something about the heinous whatever Madoodle needed from the guys? No, she said you huh? need to see it. Oh. Hmm? We're back in Ninewood Hills? You see, the gate here doesn't connect to just one the area. All throughout Grimoire, you'll find places. Save the locations that lead back here. Open the way to come and to go as you please. And how exactly do we do that? You already have the song. Just walk up to the right place, and that's all it takes. But surely a means of transportation that handy must come with a catch? No, the catch! You can use the gate as little or much as you like. What's more, time in here and time in Grimoire, they don't both flow at the same speed. 
So whatever crisis is going to down, you can put it on hold and kick back here till you're ready. Whoa! It's like magic! Yeah, really irresponsible magic. Really? Just imagine revisiting any place we've been! We'll call it the Super Porta Party! Are you the kidding? That name definitely gets an F. He deserves an H. An H? A grade's only go down to F! In America! Extra, extra, uh. read all about it. What, what do you the one here, Serapy? In case you're wondering, you can use the prism case anywhere you find one of these gates. Oh, I think I would get it now. Gates are the what you meant when you talked about a strong connection. Huh? Oh, right, right. That's the gist of it. <laughs> Adore her. The gates. Throughout Grimoire, you will find shining gates like the one you see here. Approaching a gate will connect it to the main gate in Ironwood Hills. Once it's linked up, you can use the gate to travel anywhere you've already been. <laughs> Exit gates are special one-way doors for leaving dungeons, so they're not accessible from the main gate in Ironwood Hills. Okay, so only in the dungeon. That's easy to figure, instead of it just being glowing death red. <laughs> but that's also a nice hint. I don't like how the gate's slightly aj ajar on the, r on the right one. I don't know. The Adventure Log. As you progress through the story, a chronicle of your travels is recorded in the game menu's Adventure Log. If you haven't dropped by Grimoire in a while, this is a great way to catch up. Select mini ventures to have a peek at quests and errands you've undertaken. Naturally, you can stop by to check your progress, but you can also collect quest rewards here too. Uh, I, I would advise against doing that. Collecting, doing what? Like, instead of having to go back up to the person and say, here's your thing, you could just go to your venture log and oh. just click complete, give me my thing. But you're saying, no, you can go back to them. Yeah, I would suggest would prefer... that, like, yeah, go actually going back to them, getting, like, the scene or whatever that plays whenever you give them the stuff. Okay, I gotcha. Meanwhile, I don't think I've seen a game that has a synopsis board that actually contains the mini quest, too. Hmm? Right hand. Also, I rather like uh, the game mechanic. Like, uh, so here's our RPG expert. Okay, to the Nether Nebula. First, back to town. Good, go back to town. This? Yes. I got confused. Travel. Travel. <laughs> but yeah, I like the whole little explanation of um, like here's your RPG. Why things just seem to stop from whenever the adventurers are just doing their thing. Oh, actually, now would be a good point to say. It's been quite a while since you've uh, saved. Oh, has it now? Yeah, yeah it has. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just because we don't save in between episodes because there's not a save point all the flipping time. Mm. <laughs> so then, uh, check in with Seraphie because uh, she might have something new on her head. Like, uh, always handy. Ah. Nothing this time. A rarity, actually. Actually, just try talking to her. Light Ugg. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess she'll pop up with it later, but for now, go to the twins' room. Now, you may be wondering why you'd want to do that. Yeah. Do you, do you remember where it is? I'm going to it. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know there was a quick way there, so I just tried to walk a straight line. <laughs> right, so uh, go up to the who's who. Like, I believe your book has filled up. Stop following me! I think you can command it to go away, I'm not too sure. New stuff has popped up. Oh, wait, why is there new stuff for her here? Oh. Okay. Uh, well, if you'll scroll down so I can actually read the new stuff. Okay, under Anna Crow's watchful eye... Anna Crow said that she checked up on Rain and Lawn during her slumber in Ironwood Hills. But why? Did she feel some sort of strong attachment to them? Okay. I'm as far as I am in the game and I still don't know what's up. Mm. <laughs> ah, yes. Anna Crow. Notes. Uh... Voiced by Cassandra Morris. Oh, oh, right, right. There wasn't anything bo uh, for for her. Anyways, yeah. Cassandra Morris, age 24. And never a day older, she says. It's hard to believe she'd be 24. She looks too short for that. <laughs> well, you know, when you're God, I'm sure you can choose whatever age you want to be. Right, but even size and age are different, so why would she choose to be short but say that she's 24? That just seems confusing. 
Right, she is about the same height as Lawn and Rain, isn't she? And they seem like, you know, not 20. And they're uh, said to be 15 each, yeah. respectively. Well, she's God. She can say whatever she wants. <laughs> Anyways, notes. Surprisingly casual. Seems kind of off hands. Hands off. Hands off. Old friend of Tama and Seraphi. Sincere and never known to lie. Drops dire truth with a smile, making it hard to tell when to be worried. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I still like, adore this girl so much more than Cosmos. And, uh... There's nothing else for her? Okay. Right, as you... Uh, oh, wait, I can examine. Oops. Oh, yeah. Rotate her, uh, like, you know, have God speak for you. And, uh, one of the things I like, uh, is that, you know, as you progress, stuff updates. And I'm pretty sure, not too sure about this, that uh, it's good to periodically go back and check them. Because they will actually change what they have to say as stuff progresses. I see. So I think stuff is missable in that sense. So anyways, check out Princess Sarah. Hello. I don't know if you're from the first Final Fantasy, but I'll assume so. Uh, Brook Lions, huh? Yep. 21 in Grimoire. Notes. Determined ruler of Cornelia. Elegant, kind, and polite. Disguises herself as a commoner to visit town. But you think people will notice being the only pink-haired person in ever. Oh, yeah, I can look at the appearance of a commoner. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like that, like, uh, how do they represent a ring on her? Just a dot on her, like, stub. That's true. That's like, pretty... she has, like, the Powerpuff Girls thing going on, but, you know. All the... of them do. <laughs> yeah, I was like, but that's how you represent, like, uh, a ring. That's how she talks. She just waves her arm around. <laughs> I'll have her talk. Greetings, friends. Oh, uh, you don't have to, like, uh, highlight it yet. Those symbols on the side, like, will just do whatever preset thing that you uh, set there. All right, but she only has this. Greetings, friends. Ah, I'm sure she'll say more later. Have her talk while running. No, that's not how it works. Greetings, friends. And then she ran. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, if you go back. To what? To her, because I wasn't finished with everything. Oh. Like, you're right. She is from Final Fantasy. I just didn't remember <laughs> any specifics from there. Yeah, I know next to nothing about the first Final Fantasy. Just what Decidia pretty much told me. You know, the, the town of Cornelia, uh, Warrior of Light, represents one of the four heroes. And this is apparently a person who's important to the plot of the first Final Fantasy. The most I can remember of Princess Sarah was that you had to save her yeah. from Garland. Ah. And that was like in the opening, and you fought Garland. You fought the main bad guy in the opening? Yes, because he did some bad stuff. That doesn't mean he didn't just come back later, though. Uh, oh, right. Wasn't there some weird time shenanigans going on there? I don't think so, but... But anyways, uh, one of the things I like about this is that, like, if not when you first meet the character, but going here, it gives me an excuse to throw up normal them onto the screen for everyone to see. Cool. Because, you know, here's where they look chibi, but wouldn't you like to know what they come from and how they look there? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to find, like, you know, that Tsunamura original. And then also, like, from a remake or most modern CG or what have you. Yeah. So let's go on to other stuff. Uh, nothing new for Chocolate. There was but... the Cactar. Ah, yes. Cactar Conductor. Voiced by Andrew Morris. Mm-hmm. Shigeru Chiba? Mm -hmm. Why does that sound familiar? Well, all I ever know is Shigeru Miyamoto, so... Eh, yeah, probably. Notes. Train conductor. Excellent conversationalist. Is somehow everywhere at once. Your tickets, please. <laughs> First World of Origin? Final Fantasy VI as the Cactar Monster. Which, that was surprising to me to think about, because when I think iconic creatures from, like, a Final Fantasy, Cactar is always one of the ones that came to mind. It's just, I never knew that he only started appearing in the sixth game onwards. That is crazy, and he appeared in seven and eight, and I don't know about nine, but maybe ten, because I forget. Mm. Not sure about eleven, that was online, and then twelve happened, I didn't play it, and then thirteen, boy, I'm really just out of touch. <laughs> <laughs> It's like after the first three, I didn't have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> Try to start it like I know anything. Oops, didn't mean to do that. We I mean, all have our experiences. I know, it's just... <laughs> yeah, you could be a party member, I guess. Ah, to be young and foolish again. <laughs> so, come yeah. on, come on, come on! Whoa! That's him dodging, Ow! actually. Ow! Ow! He doesn't have very much going on, does he? <laughs> well, it's like that for all the creatures. And you know how cactars are. They always have that that weirdness to them of, like, their emotions. 
it's just so weird to see the animation to mimic what he's ever done and everything else will move in correct motion <laughs> like it's real. And then like that, where he's actually flipping around. It's not like half-assed or something. I don't know. Zip! World of Final Fantasy! Right, tickets please! Right then. Pleasant journey. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? No. Okay, fine, I'll go back. But I could have swore I went through all the pages and found nobody new. Okay. So, yeah, we'll uh, need to make sure that whenever we see a gate to, like, you know, come back and check the who's who, eventually <laughs> you will f uh, unlock quick travel. That face. Oh, I hate walking everywhere. I can read you like a book. Huh? Me? Yeah. I know a lazy slacker when I see one. Hey. What's up? Oh, just some news you may find of interest. Uh, uh, uh. It'll blow your little minds. Why? Because you will never believe this. Yeah? Huh? All throughout Ninewood Hills, I have staked out some windways. Windways? Steak! Now that you mention it, I'm starving. Have you got anything else tasty on the menu? Oh, sure. Here you are. Might I recommend today's special, the Sahagin soup? <laughs> Stop that! We'll never get to the point if you egg him on like that! Huh? You want eggs? <laughs> Fried? Sunny side up? Hmm. All we've got is scrambled. Just tell us about the windways! Oh, those? They're basically just shortcuts. The kids call it fast travel. You get to zip around every which way using one of those gooey doohickeys. <laughs> yep. Uh, I don't think you're allowed to go there. So what if the food's a little gooey? I'll still eat it. We are not talking about food! Oh, wait, I get it. All that business about steak, that was a pun. Nice one, Lon. Oh, thank you. Don't tell me you thought he was serious! <laughs> okay. I realized something just for now. We can never leave Lon and Seraphie alone together. Nothing good could come of it. Well, if we get a never-ending ring of stupid like that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I adore her for it. I mean, it seems like that that makes her above Anna Crow, despite how much I love God so much. Anyways, using Windways, press square. Hey, I just remembered. Uh-huh. Like, there was a thing during the cutscene, like, in the past episode or another episode, to where, like, uh, they were talking about why you can't capture, uh, certain mirages. And, like, Lon was all, like, you know, fire the person who wrote that in or something like that, right? Mm hmm She was like, don't break the fourth wall. If she hadn't said anything, I never would have thought that he was breaking the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. So, one of those things. Anyways, press square anywhere in Ninewood Hills to open a list of shortcuts. You can use these windways to quickly warp around town. Okay. Mm. I do believe the fox cat just quit animating there <laughs> while Rain hadn't. Yeah. And nothing new on her head. So yeah, now you can just uh, quickly go wherever you want. That will open later. Silver Park? What place is that? Uh, with the gate. Oh, okay. That, oh, uh, did you want me to go somewhere? Nah, just, I was gonna like explain what they all were if like you didn't know. Okay, well, Silver Park was the only one I didn't get because I didn't remember seeing that name anywhere. This okay. is the business where the Choco Lady is, and that's this, and there's that. This one boggles me because it's like, where the hell can I not go that I apparently can go? <laughs> you will see when you get the there. No, I the won't. Maybe. There we so. go. Yeah, that's quite Ooh. handy, where it'll just mark for you where you need to go. Oh yeah, and you never really took a look at the map uh, beforehand, did you? Not too much to show here. The Royal Springs Woods weren't that far away, so... Away. Yeah, like, uh, you're only on the mid-continent right now. Everything else is made out of ice. So how long until I run into Garland around here? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, everything in due time. Choco? Choco? That sounds like a meow more than a quick. <laughs> Chocobo feathers, you scared me. Um, you're not with the Bahamutian army, are you? You see, the Bahamutian soldiers are all giants like you. It must be hard to fight them, I guess. Hey, hey. Did you know that train is used to carry wood from the forest? Not only that, mages in training use it all the time 
too. I wish I could place that voice. I do too, it sounds familiar. Hey look, we got the money shot of the town, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, actually a pretty good name for it. Uh, money shot. I think another term would be glamour shot too. That would be a much better and less crude one. Uh, There's crudeness behind the meaning money shot, but I'm not gonna say. Okay. I if just... you get poisoned in Sorry. battle, the toxins will gradually drain your HP. Make sure you deal with poison early by using an antidote. Here, this one's for you. Thanks. Not English Joseph Joestar. <laughs> and other character I forget that the guy voiced. Sigh for Naruto. Yeah, like if you just talk to him again, he'll just repeat what he says, except omit the here, this is for you part. Okay. Uh, well, anyways, I just really like the, um, like, the little chocobo family is just off to the side, just doing its chocobo thing. What, you don't see the family? I do. I was just like, is that one actually a fat chocobo, or is that a baby chick in front of him? Because there's like a white thing there. It's a chick. Okay, I'm leaving the Cornelia region. I mean, I'm leaving to the Cornelia region. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3. Old Acquaintances. That wasn't worth being a chapter at all, to change it to now. This is the dumb. <laughs> Using the map. Pressing the touchpad while in a dungeon displays a map of your surroundings. Not only does the map help you get your bearings, it also lists your destination, the location of gates and safe crystals, and even includes a list of mirages you've discovered nearby. You unlock each map as soon as you enter an area. Which I find... She said the Nether Nebula is somewhere northeast of Cornelia, right? Time to go hustle and rustle a little mirage muscle. Just don't hustle so much that you get yourself lost, okay? I might just leave you there. <laughs> When's the last time I got... Don't push it. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay, so this is all I can do. Uh, yeah, like, oh, uh, go bring up the map. And uh, press triangle. Yeah, that's where it would display the mirages if there were any here. Mm. And there's also like a quick little uh, treasure, I mean not treasure, uh, a key, like off to the left hand corner in case you forget what certain things are. Oh, I can just see this whole little map for some reason. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I can't do anything with it because it didn't give me travel options. Yeah. Also, I find it kind of odd that this music yeah. just like will play in only certain parts while yet most other parts of the world map has its own theme. Wow, the air here is so clean. Yeah, right? Yahoo! <laughs> You're a Yahoo! Wait, no, no, Rain, you need to shout for it to work. <laughs> Yahoo! I'm glad at least he can play off the bitchiness. But, uh, yeah, I just think this is rather interesting, just dramatic music from just walking from one point to another. You ever heard rather... Adventure Tune? Like, I've heard Adventure Tunes, I don't recall ever like, it being this dramatic. Just for like walking a relatively short distance. This might this place must be truly small because I was like that looks far away. And then I'm noticing it getting really closer as I barely take a step. Three potions, neat. Uh huh. And that uh, like uh, you probably didn't hear it too well, but this is actually the music it played like right after the intro was done, mm -hmm. and you were free to walk up to the train. Huh? Can you? No, nope, can't even go there yet. Uh, someday island in the sky connected by a giant stupid tree. <laughs> like, possibly in the chapter after the next chapter. Possibly. I don't know, my memory's not that great. I don't know what it is, but there's something I kind of like about what is just a JPEG to make an object, but then it flows in the wind like that. The fake wind. It's like, I can tell it's flat, but dang it, they made it look pretty as all heck. <laughs> it's like a pop-up storybook doing its thing. I guess so. You know what the worst example is I've seen of bustling trees, though? Huh. Strangely, The Last of Us, a game that was very well made. Because I remember thinking, these trees look kind of neat, then I looked at them and I was like, why the hell are they an amorphous blob? Because <laughs> that's how they, <laughs> they undulated instead of rustling. Because uh -huh. it was just like this big polygonal leaf object that was like... Is what it looked like in the tree. Yeah, also, I most, find a picture of that. Also, most of them were like not even really connected to the branch, you know, when they moved. Like they were moving off of the tree branches. Well, this looks like a dungeon. Is this the Nebulae? The Nether Nebula. Oh. I wonder if this is a legit dungeon from Final Fantasy. I don't know. Be the careful. The mirages in here are a lot the stronger than any you faced the before. Yeah, let's not mess around in the Never Neba thingamabob. Nether Nebula. Do you think you can do something about that habit of forgetting the name of virtually everything? <laughs> 
That was kind of a funny. Would you stop fu- <laughs> Oh, here's another gate. Oh, jeez, come on. Oh, two That's feet. The right. Gates, they usually turn up in towns or at the start of most mirage-infested areas. You never have to travel far to the visit a place you've been. Whenever you want to get from point the A to point the B, just use the gate as a handy little shortcut. A shortcut, huh? So, like, if we wanted to go back to Cornelia right this instant, we could just take this gate back to Ninewood Hills, then we can take the gate from there to Cornelia. You see? All in all, it makes for a pretty short shortcut. Yeah! If it were hair, you'd have to call it... You'd have to call it a buzz cut! I, I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He just had to use that train of thought. It had well, to use it. I don't think it will actually open unless you actually use it. So uh, yeah, just hop in. It'll take you back to Ninewood Hills. Then you can just immediately hop back to this dungeon. I thought I could only use one-way exit dungeon. It looked like it was red, like the picture showed. Nah, it was a normal one. But yeah, like I first okay, a uh, short, a really short haircut. It's a buzz cut. I, I'm aware of that terminology. I think. I just don't know why he really needed to go there. That was like a weird thing to do for. A it comes back in a joke later. Oh, but okay. Well, yeah. That's supposed to be a brick joke, but not a good one. A Libra Mira Jewel. Ah, good. Oh no, not Mira Jewels. <laughs> yes, the improvement from Dream Drop Distance. Mirage jewels are made by extracting your Mirage's abilities and crystallizing them into gemstones that impart those same abilities to Rain and Lawn. I see. That's pretty good. Also, I didn't get the pun that they're Mirage jewels. <laughs> I, I pr clearly pronounced it wrong the first time. As the twins fulfill certain conditions like raising their levels, they'll unlock more Mirage jewel slots. Eventually, they'll be able to equip up to eight Mirage jewels apiece. I see. That's a lot. It's more than two. Equipping Mirajules. When Rain and Lawn equip Mirajules, they temporarily gain those abilities. If you've got... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. If you've got a stack, but need just one more piece to unlock a more powerful ability, Mirajules are a great way to make up the difference. You can unlock Mirajules on Mirage boards to, uh, or find them in treasure chests. I see. Very interesting. So let's try that out now. Alrighty, we're giving it to Rain. Right, because since wrong, we have... <laughs> wrong one. I didn't realize this is a thing I haven't looked at before because it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I just rather like uh, the kind of things that they're saying, like in order to unlock the later level ones. I uh, well, if you go back to rain. I'm sorry. I'm just like, what the hell are these weird items I need? <laughs> oh, you've never heard of them before. Doga's artifact, Une's mirror, the rat tail, and Griffin's heart. Okay. Like, this okay. seems like monster drops, and these seem like super sacred treasures. Well. Uh, yeah, she needs Libra because Lon has Tama, so, uh, you know, Tama comes with Libra. Right, but if I didn't have it later, she was going to keep it, because then she seems to be faster, so why not? Oh, well, you can check their, uh, speeds, uh, with right. add agility. Just directly compare them to see who's faster. Okay. They're... It's okay, so it's They're the, the same speed. The it's, only it's difference the monsters. would be, yeah, who, like, has them. But, uh... uh Shoot, what was the same? Uh, were you talking about the jewels or the abilities to get the things? The things okay. down at the bottom that yeah. they needed. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I got, I recognized them as like their important key items. What they did individually, I'm not sure, except for one, and that would be if you go to Lawn. I've always heard about this when it comes to Final Fantasy One. Your characters like uh, start out as like simple classes, but they can actually class upgrade into something grander. In order to do that, you had to find a rat tail, which you had to grind an enemy until they dropped it, and it was a rare drop. Then you had to take it all the way to Bahamut and present it to him, and then he'll grant you his power, and that's how you class up in the original Final Fantasy game. Neat. Grind a rat tail and give that to Bahamut. So I'm not sure what those other key items are, but they must have some sort of significance of that nature, possibly. Let's see. Uh, windways, jewels, map, adventure log, all that stuff you've seen. The gates. Mirror jewels to add to your arsenal. <laughs> yeah, the best way to get them is actually uh, from your monsters. Yeah, I wasn't surprised with that idea. Yeah. They're kind of few and far in between when it comes to getting them from treasure chests. They're there, but they're much more on the rare side. Time to fight. Man, I love a good adventure. Come on, sis. Yeah. Let's follow this rabbit hole as far as it goes. Yeah, fine. Just behave yourself. Ah. Yeah, 
Uh, Here we go! Yeah, we got this. Huh, new creatures. Yes, indeed. Well, be sure to leave with them so that you'll know how to imprison their souls, since that's apparently what you're doing. I mean, I uh, don't see why it wouldn't be like... <laughs> What? Just mini golem. I was like, what is this thing? I didn't ah. think it was a golem. Requires a mini golem prism. Use physical text to create. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, the uh, other thing said that their souls are imprisoned by some other master, yeah. so that should mean that you're imprisoning their souls whenever you do it. I need to get used to this because I'm not using the basic system, which is left and right. This is a whole screen down here I need to be looking at. So let's try to figure out why can't I look at the Medjugorje, and then I realized why. Okay, physical attacks. So these are like from Final Fantasy XI, right? Because um, I don't recognize Mandragoras looking like this in anything but how they look in Final Fantasy, and I don't remember seeing them until after XI, so I'm assuming I they came there first. I first saw them in XII. Oh, okay. In fact, uh, yeah, yeah, feel free to go on. Like, I had a really, like, a normal time when it came to XII. <laughs> I was just going around on the field, and I saw, like, a Mandragora just walking around. It got into fights with other creatures, because that was the neat thing about XII. Everything was live in real time. You saw creatures going around, roaming the field, and doing stuff. They had predators and stuff like that. And, like, I saw this one creature attack a Mandragora, and I was like, I ain't gonna, like, let it kill these adorable things. So I killed it, right? And the Mandragora just went off on its own business, because it had no reason to attack me. I wasn't being aggressive towards it. And then I thought, huh, oh, that Mandragora is pretty hurt. I know. And uh, I was actually able to use a potion on it. It took that as an act of aggression and started to attack me. And then I was forced to kill the thing that I love. Oh. And I was like, well, that sucks. Like, uh, with, so with how much detail went into Final Fantasy 12 because boy is that a detail rich game like uh you aren't gonna try to imprison Mandragora? I'm going to I just wanted to get rid of one of the golems so there's not so many people beat me up because uh, I'm already dying almost yeah uh, okay I just need to use a potion I'm not sure who I should use it on me yeah okay it was her yeah. still oh right that thing okay yeah well I'll do that a bit but yeah it's just like if it really saddened me that, like, you know, there was a creature I adored, it was peaceful, and, like, I even helped it out. And I didn't try to really help it out by, like, killing it. And yet, it just took... Like, it forced me in a situation where I had to kill it. Mm. And boy, did that make me sad. Oops. And, I mean, it would have been nice if there was a little detail in Final Fantasy XII where doing nice things for creatures would actually have them ally with you for a bit. Like, if you attack a creature, and it was something of a predator of that creature or something, like, it would help you out. So that would have been a nice touch. Like, a temporary field ally of sorts. Okay, so those are getting pretty difficult. Oh, uh, because of your poison? Yeah, you should cure that. I don't think it goes away on its own. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh... Hmm. Yeah, this is... This might be a bit tough without killing them. I'm trying to just catch them, but they're super hard to catch, apparently. Uh, This'll do. Well, this ain't the only time you'll run into them. So, you, you certainly do have the option of killing one of them, so you only have to worry about the one. Right. Like, that is always... No, that's usually an option when it comes to normal encounters. Well, there was more golems last time, so I'm gonna kill off the golem and catch him later. Mm. And you can imprison, but you can heal, right? No, nobody can do that. You should stack. I was... okay. There we go. Now you've wasted a turn getting ready to die. <laughs> Should I imprison? Yes. Or heal? Imprison. Okay. Hey, stop that. <laughs> oh, is that my great uh, Mandragora sob story? I yeah. guess so. But, and, yeah, uh, to go back to your earlier thing, like, I believe that those creatures first appeared in Final Fantasy XII. Okay. Or at least that was my first encounter with them, because I certainly didn't encounter them in uh, 10 and before. Why the heck is this guy so hard to catch? Jesus. And, you know, Enna works in mysterious ways. Oh yeah, that's another thing that I always like uh, felt about Anna, that like, uh, in like the god sense, she could uh, just be uh, interpreted as the physical representation of the game engine. 
Because you know how everyone says, oh, you know, by the grace of the random number goddess, maybe you will get this or that to happen. Oh, I can't imprison anymore. Oh, really? Run out of turns. Well, that ought to do that it. That wasn't so bad. Okay, you should probably see if uh, you can give your characters any skills or something that would help. Like, uh, healing techniques are just, like, is enough or something. That'd be nice, but I don't think they do. What did I get? Prisoners. Uh, oh, I got the new ones. Okay, so yeah, you'll definitely be able to catch them the next time it comes up. But, uh... You're saying good skills, but I don't think I have any. Oh, you need to check your mirage boards. Like, that's the quickest way to do it, if I remember correctly. And if they have at least three... Then you're uh, yes, two. most likely Oops. able to get something. Oh, I can look at the full board. I can only switch when I'm here. Yeah. Oh, that thing might be able to get something. But then again, you don't use it in your party. No, I don't. So, uh, you don't have anything. Cramp uh, just has two. What about uh, you, Coco? Coco? Coco has three. Although, if I remember correctly, um, needs four. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing you can do is return to town and get free healing. I could. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I always kind of like that as an idea that like uh, Anna like represents the game engine, you know, represents the god. Because wouldn't you consider that to be the god of a game world? Yes. Like the game engine itself, with how it dictates stuff, because it can't break its own rules. You need a genie for that. <laughs> and. Uh, Oh. You said go back. No, no, I, I, it's just like, it's around that time. Well, I already figured that. <laughs> okay, so... I'll just so, uh, resupply with my non-existent money. I can buy a potion. Oh, okay. And uh, also, like, uh, you could check in... Huh? Look at the stone! It's so pretty! Oh, those are the called Mirage Jewels. Oh. They're specialty items made by isolating a Mirage's abilities. If either the one of you equips them, you'll be able to wield whatever the abilities they hold. The right Mirage Jewels with the right the stack can make for a powerful combination. Okay. Oh, shoot, don't talk to her. Jesus Christ, what the hell? Right, uh, okay. So, yeah, we're definitely going to have to cut it off uh, here for now and then come back. See you next time, everyone. Bye.